Hi, this is a secondary support for the assignment 5D, uh, Determining Earthquake Epicenters. And one of the areas that we can use to determine the distance of an earthquake from a specific point is the arrival of the different waves that come from the earthquake. Some are called primary, as you can imagine, those arrive first, and S is for the secondary. And so when we're looking at a seismogram, we can determine the interval by which those waves hit. We can't obviously as a human being, they just come too quickly usually. But let's take a look at what we're learning from this. And this comes directly from the assignment and directly from the site that we use. So there are data recording um, stations and we're looking at what's called the SP interval. And we use three different stations to do this so that we get triangulation. So we measure the interval between the S waves and the P waves, and here's the sample we're given. So this is one of those in the old movies where you might see uh, something that looks almost like a pen, and it jumps from time to time. We can determine later something about the magnitude of the earthquake, but right here we're just looking to determine how far away it is from three different stations. So here you can see the P waves arrive, and we call that zero. That's our first indication of waves from an earthquake. Then we have a number of small waves and we get another relatively large piece when the S wave arrives. So what we're looking at is what is the interval between the arrival of the P waves and the S waves, that's the SP interval. In this case it's 36 seconds. So we're looking down and reading it like a graph. Here's zero and we're saying, okay, it came at zero, what we're calling zero. And then the S waves came at about 39. We're looking for that initial real jump up. I'm sorry, not 39, 36. Um, so we're gonna take a look as we move forward as to what that means when we look at ones of our actual example. So here we have Eureka. Um, I misstated a little bit um, on the last little piece of recording. When we get to this S wave, it can be a jump up or a jump down. It's the first major delineation. So we see this wave of waves come through, and when, then we see a second wave come through. So I apologize for that. So here's our first wave. It's called the P wave, the primary wave. It comes in at zero. Here we are. We're going to look forward and we're going to get that first real jump. There's going to be variation in this. Computers could do this more accurately than we can. But nevertheless, we're trying to learn what's the science and what's the data upon which we base these decisions. So here we get 42, 46, I'm sorry, 42, 4, 6, 8, 50. So we want to figure out, okay, how far along? My guess is around 49. Might someone say 48, 49, 50? Yes. So under Eureka, we then would go in and we would type in, I would say 49. So the, the S wave, the secondary wave, came in 49 seconds after the initial wave. Now we're going to look at Las Vegas down here. We're going to do the same thing. This is the primary wave that comes through. We see right away where the secondary wave comes through. What is the difference in time from when the primary wave comes through to the secondary wave? 62, 4, I'm going to say right around 64. So here we would type 64. The one that some people are having difficulty with is the ELPO. Um, and I'm going to let you go back and read it. You read it exactly the same. Start from the zero point, this is when the primary wave comes in, and when you see this big point of the secondary waves. Um, so good luck!